Is Shirley here? Where's Shirley? Watching us 
That was my boy band today. They sound good. It's so nice to have some male voices in the choir. Huh, Barb? Yeah. And Barbara did a wonderful job as usual. Thank you, leading us <laughs> by the eye <laughs> of the tiger. <laughs> so I'm Lynn Richard. I've been a member of the church for over 20 years. And I stand here before you, tall, lithe, and proud, that even though I've had a very
you to say what you believe uh, or that you agree, but it's merely in the, the intent of our church. So our little church really matters. Uh, <coughs> Tom has been asked to write a piece regarding this, are we Christian or, or Christian-based, by Mark Hicks, who, if you're not familiar with him, is one of the leaders in the unity movement. And that was followed up by being asked to write another piece by Reverend Anna Schaus to be sent to Unity Worldwide Ministry. So we do count. They're listening, thanks to Tom. They are listening to us. We have an important um, piece in this pie. So let's think about it and have that discussion next week. The following week, Tom will talk about practicing what he preaches. It's a personal story about how he follows the principles we talk about now more than ever. And now we come to namaste. I think everybody in the room knows what that is for you at home. We're going to put our hands together in prayer position and look directly into someone's eyes or your cat or dog, doesn't matter, or bird or turtle. <laughs> They're beings too. <laughs> and you're going to look in their eyes and look right into their soul and see the Christ in them and honor the Christ in them as they see the Christ in you. Namaste, Amy. We're going to take a moment and namaste to each other. takes a moment, but it feels so good, right? Doesn't it? Instead of sitting in a room full of people, even your own family, one's on the computer, one's in another room, greet each other, look at each other, see the goodness in each other. It's there. Sometimes it's buried a little deep. <laughs> it's there, I promise you. <laughs> so thank you. Namaste, everyone. Okay. I think we're going to do another song. We're going to think about what would happen if we were brave.
miracles in you and me. If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's edge. Where fools and dreamers dare to tread, I'd never lose faith, even while losing my way. The step would I take today if I were brave? Thing to think about. Thank you. You can take care of that if you want. Yeah, yeah I spoke of those guys were brave. Okay. So as I was saying, part of this little church being so important, um, we're, we're actually bigger on the outside than on the inside, I think. Um, because we are becoming very well known, as I said, for unity worldwide. And that, that is due to our Reverend Tom Scheinler, who um, he gets it. I mean, he really, he preaches from the heart, and they're noticing that. They're noticing that he does walk the talk. They're noticing that he finishes what he starts. That's really an important thing for unity as a whole worldwide. So I'd like to introduce Reverend Tom Scheinler. Oh, thanks, Wayne. I love you, too. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My favorite line of almost any movie is Mr. T going, I got a lot of more, I got a lot of more. <laughs> I don't know why that sticks with me, but it's just a great line. So welcome, thank you, thank you again for that song, thank you for every song in the choir. Frank, thanks for joining in, Kurt, thanks for joining in. Um, I always love being here. Hi Tracy, you got the giggles? Oh, that happens a lot. <laughs> so today's talk, it's called Life Envisioning. And I took the title from the book by, of Life Visioning by Dr. Michael Beckwith. There's a lot of information that I've learned over the years I get from him. So if you ever have any of his books or see them, go through them. They're really good books. Look up his videos on YouTube. The audio versions of his books are great because you get to hear his voice while he reads it to you. And I love the title, and I love this topic. You know, it goes back to when man first became aware of themselves. You know, we as creatures gained wisdom and became proactive in our lives. It's the moment of spark within us, and we began to interact with the divine and realize that we are part of the divine. 
And we get to work with all these wonderful laws, the laws of the universe, and we get to create the life that we want to create. We get to see our life unfold before it actually does. We get to visualize it and claim it in our mind. It's an easy concept, but it's hard to commit to. We've been conditioned to think about our lives in limits, whether it's financial, owning a home or a new car to love. We all have sorts of re all sorts of reasons that we self-limit. I've told you before that I've had a poverty complex since I was the age of eight. I allowed events in my life to reaffirm that I was not worth financial success. We, we get to overcome this. We get to let go of the past. We get to see through a new eye or eye of a tiger. You know, if your eye is healthy, then our perception is true. We cast our perceptions outward. Sometimes our perceptions are blinded or they're shaped by our past. Sometimes we're blinded by self-righteousness. We've been blinded by our own history or our perception does not re match the reality of who we really are. A healthy eye sees our true self. It recognizes our highest potential and our dreams. And trust me I tell, when I tell you it's okay to dream for the stars. Poverty is something that happens, but we do not have to limit ourselves to it. Lack is a state of mind. We do not have to live in it. One of the things I love about unity, especially all unity churches, is the fellowship. There's never lack at a unity fellowship. There's always abundance. Chapter 8 of Dr. Michael Beckwith's book, um, Life Envisioning, begins with a term that I heard years ago. And you've heard me mention this, and you guys have probably known it long before me. This or something better. This is something that I can easily wrap my mind around. Because we picture, when we picture our desires based on what's preconceived, and especially with those preconceived limitations, then those limitations are what we keep re-manifesting. But when we add this or something better to our affirmation, it leaves that affirmation open to all the possibilities that your mind can imagine. You know, evolution is something that happened to all the species on our planet, but we get to be interactive in our evolution. We have the ability, we have this mental intuition to work with the divine and to create our lives. In the beginning, we just made choices that seemed to work, not understanding that we were changing our evolution. We used fire and we learned to cook with it. That made digesting, digestion easier, allowing us to eat less, break down foods easier, get more nutrients. Fire killed bacteria, the food was healthier. We heated our structures, life became more relaxed. And during that, we began to have a more pleasant life. And we began to develop things like art. We created things to dream of. And we really started interacting. And now we're really beginning to understand that the connection of us to the divine brings about into existence the life that we hope to live. And this is so amazing. Because we can focus on a happy, a whole life, incorporate dreams or desires. We can become whatever we want and set our attention to. And we've known this on some levels. We've known that we can do this. Unless I didn't originally ask Casey out, we never would have started a family. Unless she didn't take the risk on me, the same result. You know you have to be proactive in parts of your life. And we do it all the time. You just don't make the... The, you know, the connection that we're creating our life. But you make plans to go to college or work. We do it on a daily basis on what to buy and cook and how to dress. And we're proactive in creating our life and who the world wants to see and what we want to be. But we can do this on a magnificent level of anything that your heart desires. You know, we envision the life that we want to lead. You know, we live in a physical realm, but do we live in that realm only? You know, we react to the physical world, or do we understand that 
life is beyond the physical world, beyond our first perception of what we see, do we understand that we also live in the metaphysical world? Metaphysical simply means beyond the physical. That's where life envisioning happens. It's the power of all these non-physical things being lined up to create your life. And it's such a freeing concept because we no longer have to be influenced by the past or our past or past generations. Our DNA, our family lineage does not matter. It only plays a part up to the point that you allow it to. You can recreate yourself in each new moment. You ever go to a high school reunion? You know, it's nice to see the people that you knew. But for the most part, reunions suck. <laughs> There's just an element of being thrust back into the structure and the influences of the past. Well, life envisioning erases all that. Now, we get to use our imagination to create who we want to be and who we are. Imagination is the first step in envisioning. You know, I don't, again, I don't know what your best life looks like, but you do. You dream of it all the time. Maybe it's a vacation or learning a new skill. Maybe it's inspiring others. Maybe it's a new relationship. I know whatever it is, it will also evolve and it will change. New ideas will be added and others will drop away. What seemed like a good idea a plan one day may change. Something else may excite you. And that's part of the human experience, and that's such a wonderful thing. But allow your imagination to just run free. You don't have to limit it. And when you think about new things, you change something within you. Cognitive things change, and neural paths change and grow. When you try new things, your mind adapts and it grows. Your brain changes to accommodate the new thing very much like muscle memory. Your brain adjusts to make the new possible. When we stay in old ways and habits, we stall this growth. We repeat our past lives over and over. And often we repeat the lives of those who have come before us or who have influenced us. But thinking about and trying new things opens us up to more possibilities, a newness of life, new interests, new compassions, new empathies, a new understanding of that which is different. You learn about the lives of others, and all this helps you create your life in a whole new way. And when I started playing guitar, I thought there was no way my hands were going to sort any of this out. I didn't have that gift. I couldn't put my fingers in the right spot. I couldn't form a G chord. It was all out of my realm. But I stuck with it. And soon, muscle memory took over. And those chords became easy. And my hands did what I wanted without me thinking about it. This happens because the body and mind respond to what is new to make it possible. And it happens in every level of our existence. You know, if you got hired by a company tomorrow, and it was the only job you could get that could feed you and your family, and you were given a certain set of tasks that you had to do in the right order, hit these buttons, tap something with your foot, and do this, make everything happen. At first, you would think, overwhelmed, I can't do it. But you have no choice. Your body would adapt. And before you know it, you'd be doing all this, and everything would work out. The body works like that. Although you've never done it before, you figure it out. Life is the same way. You can figure anything out. Our mind and body just does that. It rewires itself to accommodate the new skills and ideas, so much so that new skills and ideas become second nature. Our mind and body will do anything to accommodate new ideas and skills. Neuropaths build, and it makes it happen. They build best at night. And they also build what you most focus on right before you go to sleep. So when you're focused on a skill or a dream, set aside time before bed to think about that, to work it out, to get it in your mind, to build the narrow path while you sleep. You know, I was taking my ministerial classes, and I was having trouble 
with a concept or learning about the history of Christianity. I would study before bed, and I would stick with it. And by morning, I kind of understood it better. When I was learning guitar, and I couldn't figure out the fingering or position or anything, and I still do it now. When I work on it right before I go to bed, the next day it is so much easier because my mind has been working on those neural paths, making it happen. And this happens over and over in all aspects of our life. The more we experience new things, the more we develop our brain and our neural paths, and the more that we create the life that we want. Imagine that, your whole body and mind and the universe working within you to create the life that you vision. Now, how many choices have we made in the past because of outside influences? Parents' ideas, bosses' ideas, teachers' ideas, peers. We get steered in one direction or another. That's part of life, and it happens to all of us. But at the same time, we have this wonderful thing going on around us at all times to envision our life, to focus and take the steps toward it. You know, I was told my limitations after my first heart surgery and my second one. I was told it so many times. Last summer, I was told it. Last week, I was told it. I was told I cannot get back on the transplant list. I know what that means to them. They don't know what it means to me. I just take the next step on whatever path. I sort it out because I know I'll be the better for it. I can manifest it. We all get to do this. I can handle anything because of this power of the universe to envision my life. The power can manifest my life. This thing that we call God, the law of attraction, metaphysics, anything that you want to call it, it's always there, working for you, working for me, to be what we manifest, what we want our life to be. What does your dream look like? It doesn't have to be a big, lifelong dream. It could be a need in the moment. When it was my heart issues, my needs were more immediate, to be able to take the next step. But long term, at the same time, I was thinking of 5K. And I took those immediate steps until eventually my red sneakers crossed that line as a 5K. Eventually, they all add up. See your goal. Know it in your heart and mind and decide what next step you need to take. The universe is lining up to help you make that happen, to help you find your path and take that step. You know, I know this like I know there's air waiting for me to breathe. I don't know how or where it comes, but I know that it does. So limits do not have to be a part of life. None of us have to settle. We only settle when we allow something to limit ourselves. It helps me to set my mind in a comfortable place before I envision what my life's going to be. It's much easier to envision life flow when I feel better loved and cared for. For some, this is hard, but, but, but go with me. Think of a time in your life when someone, anyone, was proud of you. Maybe it was your parent. Maybe it was this morning. Maybe it was last week. Maybe it was when you were a child. Maybe it was when you got married. Maybe it was your coach or a teacher. Maybe it was your own child. And maybe you did something and you just knew deep down, damn, I'm proud of that. Think of that moment when you were all encompassed in love. And take time now and then to think of those moments. Set your mind in a good place. And bask in that now and then. And bask there before you start envisioning your life on what you want it to be. You want to be in the flow. It's like priming the pump. But instead of using water, we're using love. It goes so much. I mean, we have all this around us. It's the inheritance of that which created us. You know, it's the love of the universal presence. And it's so much more powerful than anything we've ever dealt with. And I know it might not seem like it is, or we may take it for granted, but this presence gave us life. Seriously, nothing is so powerful as the force that creates life. 
And that force loves you. And how do I know this? Again, it gave you life. It's a real simple equation. Bask in that thought that you are loved. And then start examining the highest vision of yourself. What is the highest vision of my life? What is the universe's idea of me? Be careful not to confuse this with your persona. A persona is something we take off, we take on to craft for various situations. We have different personas with different people. Different persona with a teacher, our boss, our wife, our kids, our friends, our peers. Really look in at who you are. And look at what your secret dreams are when you do that. And you'll start sorting out what you want your life to be, the things that you want to attract in life. And then ask yourself, what's the next stage of my unfolding? What's rising up within you as new you? There are always parts of you that you want to discard and parts of you that you want to keep. Sort them out. Ask yourself, what is bubbling up to the surface? And what do I want to hang on to? What gifts and talents are trying to be expressed through my life? Understand your gifts and understand that they're different from others. They're not all the same. Embrace the differences, but focus and align with those that are really you. Not only what others see, but what you see when you go into yourself, what's wanting to emerge. Now remember, and I mentioned this often, we talked about David taking down Goliath with a stone. He used his skills and gifts that were unique to him. Or Jesus telling the disciples, you want to pay for a tax, go to the water, see a fish with a silver coin in its mouth. Telling them, they were fishermen, use what you know. Go catch enough fish to pay the tax. Look inside yourself. Use what you know. You have the first focal vantage point of who you are and what your gifts are. And then you envision your life and think about what makes you uniquely you. Think about how your gifts will align with what you're envisioning. Those are your tools for building your life. Allow these thoughts about you to come forth and be willing to allow this to happen. Don't discount what, discount what comes up, but be willing enough to allow your mind to run. Being willing is part of this. Be willing to accept change, to do the work, to let go. Be willing to cast away doubt and just let it all flow. Be free of the daily worries. And ask yourself this as well, and this is very important. What must I become to allow this new vision of me to manifest itself through me? There's something within you that needs change. Maybe it's the willingness to change, but change has to happen. Otherwise, we would not grow. We would stay stuck in the same old ways. Knowing that you need to change doesn't mean your life is not good. We all have those things that in life make our, our life good and difficult. We all have things we want out of life. So accept that change needs to happen and allow it. So again, think about what you must become to allow this new version of you to manifest through you. You know, maybe if you see yourself as a runner, you must develop a runner's mind. Maybe if you want more out of business, you must develop the habits of a successful business person. Maybe it's wanting your family to take you more serious. You have to develop the qualities that others count on, like wisdom, not overreacting or not taking a knee-jerk reaction, whatever comes along with that. For many, we just need to develop patience. How many times do we sign on a change? We want the world to see it. We want to tell our relatives that we've changed and, or that we've discovered a new thing about ourselves. I mean, we love this phase. This is the honeymoon phase. We want to tell the world, whether it's to mend a fence or just excitement over our new path. But the problem is we often haven't done the work yet. The change hasn't really happened in us. It's just glossy. We're living in the momentum or the motivation of the initial excitement. But maybe it's something new. Maybe 
financial habits have to change. You have to develop whatever the new you is to make these dreams happen. And look, if you're dreaming of a new life, yet every day you find yourself on the sofa eating bonbons or watching game shows, and you've done that for 14 years, you've not really changed. You're just thinking about change. You have to do the work. You know, long after Unity kicks me out, we'll probably change the name of this church to Tom's Church of Do the Work, because <laughs> that's my... The other thing you may need to is really work on your faith, develop your faith. And to do that, look at where faith has worked within you. You'll find that it's done a lot of work for you. You're here. And seek out the tools that help you understand faith. It might be books. It might be YouTube videos. It might be meditation. It just might be reflecting on the day-to-day -day things in your life that have been answered. Seek out the tools that motivate you. I never stop seeking out those tools. I'm always open to new thoughts and new perspectives. It's part of what allows change in me to happen. Maybe you want a happier life. And perhaps the change is stop complaining about the life that you have and be thankful for the part that works. Identify the parts that don't and change them. Find a new way to reach out, a new way to meet people with experiences that you can relate to. Or meet people with experiences that you just want to have. You don't have to be the world's best motorboatist or water skier to just join a group and learn about it. If you have an interest, find people who have that interest. Discover the new parts of you. You know, I tell you each month about our poetry group. And you would think I'm a poetry enthusiast. My son's a poet, and I would have poetry books all over my house. But I don't. I get stumped when poems don't rhyme. It just doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. I get stumped when a poem doesn't make me giggle. I embarrass Casey all the time. But I leave each poetry <laughs> group. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could say no. But I leave each poetry group with an enthusiasm for life because we have these talks. And in each talk that we have, I discover something new about me and about the world. Take those times to find those things for you. Discover new selves, discover new things about yourself by trying new things, right? And kind of that's where I started. I'm getting good at it. I went full circle. It's like I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but then once you discover that, again, do the work. Unity 5, uh, principle 5. It's the most wonderful principle. It's not enough to know. You must do the work. We all dream of life. So many times we'll just lay in bed and have that, and then we let it go. Make a storyboard. Put it on your computer. Write it on your refrigerator. Tell your friends, oh, this is what I'd like to do. Sometimes they're going to say, eh. Then tell other friends who won't say, eh. <laughs> but... Do the work, and then the steps start lining up. That friend may, hey, I saw this book. I think that helps you on your path. He'll turn on the news station, and we'll be talking about that particular thing. Remember that time I was talking with Casey about she it would help her to see Marianne Williamson. She was going through a thing where she wanted to change jobs, and I couldn't think of the right words to say, but I knew this lady would have the right words. She said, I would take a sign. We turned the TV on the next morning. And we live in Northwood, New Hampshire. Not the mecca of the universe. Or New Hampshire, or even our county. <laughs> but Casey takes this road on the way home. It's a back road. And it turned out, at the exact same time, she would be going by this yoga studio. Marianne Williamson would be speaking in that studio that day. And we went. The universe lines up to make your dream happen. Everything you need to guide you is out there waiting for you to reach out and take the steps. God has created every single possibility. And I mean that. If you look at the beginning of time till now, every possibility has been happening. I believe in infinite possibility. And if every possibility is out there, 
And whatever you're wishing or dreaming is a possibility out there waiting for you to claim it as yours. You just have to stop doing the same things over and over again. You have to realize what does not work and find one that does. You know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's your kingdom. Reach out and grab it. It's always with us. And all we have to do is just turn to it at any given moment. I mean, what a simple, beautiful system that we are so loved by that which created us that all of what it is is just waiting there to help us create our lives. Thank you. I'm going to step away and we'll, we'll do the meditation. Thank you guys so much.
a little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to ask each one of you to breathe in and exhale. And begin to find your comfortable breathing pattern. Let your body settle into your chair. Let your shoulders and neck relax. Let your body be open to the flow of all that is. We come together knowing that there is one presence and one power in the universe. And in our lives, God the good and great omnipresent. As I turn my mind toward wholeness and well being, I heal. Streams of healing and vitality flow through my body, through my mind and through my spirit. The power within me is greater than any condition. Divine love radiates from my heart to others in an ever-widening circle, I embody divine love. And I am grateful for my health, for my fulfilling relationships, and for all in my life. I am blessed. I am a blessing to others. As I replace negative, unproductive thoughts, I add images of wellness, prosperity, order, and love. I participate in healing of my total being and the world around it. I believe in, I visualize, I accept my good, and I accept the good of the world around me. Because I am guided by the spirit within. I let go of all fear and doubt. I make wise choices that bring positive results. I am perfectly poised to adjust to adjust to a changing world, to changing circumstances. I adapt with ease and grace. Abundant blessings flow to me and through me. I am alive with creative energy, awake to prospering ideas, and open unlimited goodness. Mm. 
Now it's going to come back to me. Of your prayers for people. As I say each week, at any given moment, there's any anyone anywhere out in the world. There are people fighting a battle to be brave. Some battles known, some battles not known. And each week we pray for these people. We're going to start with praying for ourselves today. I see myself as whole, healthy, happy, grounded, and loved. And I'm blessed in every moment. And with this blessing, I affirm that for everyone in the world, from our family to our friends, our neighbors, to our state and our country, to people living in the most wonderful places, people living in places that they're struggling in. We see abundance of love, health, wholeness. We see abundance of food, all the things that make a life possible. see an end to loneliness within ourselves and within the world. So we're all connected and we feel the love of each person and creature on our planet. And so it is. Amen. I'd like to do the collection. Ooh, it's out here. You are welcome. and offering divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have all that I give and all that I receive and so it is amen we'll finish this with the prayer of protection and then the peace song the light of God surrounds me the love of God enfolds me the power of God protects me the presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well, and we are richly blessed. Thank you all.